Hi folks, this is Glenn Guy, your travel photography guru. This presentation is an announcement of an upcoming photography workshop I'm running titled Night Photography Workshop in the City of Melbourne. The workshop will take place on Thursday, September the 29th. We'll meet on Princess Bridge, which is on St Kilda Road. The bridge, of course, over the Yarra River, linking Flinders Street Station and the Arts Centre. On Princess Bridge, on the same side of the road as the Arts Centre. We plan to meet from 5pm onwards. The workshop itself will start at 5.30pm. Images that I'll show as part of this presentation um, were all made on a Canon 5D Mark II camera with a fairly high quality zoom lens that is really just a workhorse lens. Uh, I use it for a lot of my work. That's the Canon 24-105 f4 zoom lens. Now it's not an incredibly fast lens, but nevertheless, um, if you use your camera well and you've got good techniques, um, you can make uh, night photographs even without a tripod and I'll be demonstrating how that's possible uh, to help folks out on the evening. Um, the ISO I've used uh, for the shots in this presentation will vary from 100 to 800 because of course as uh, the conditions get darker you need to increase your ISO um, and the reason for doing that largely is to prevent camera movement. On a tripod um, you can often stay with the lower ISOs, but for handheld photography, this is um, one way that you can still make um, relatively sharp pictures and the quite uh, low levels of illumination. Of course, the shutter speeds will vary with the amount of light as well. So this is where we meet, um, Princess Street Bridge, uh, looking down onto the arrow, and you can see Southgate on the left-hand side of the frame and um, elements of the city on the right-hand side. As the light gets uh, lower, there's often more atmosphere in the, uh, the air and, you know, more brooding light. If we're lucky, we'd have a beautiful sunset to photograph as well. So, you know, it makes sense to meet at this uh, location. There's lots of interesting things uh, passing us by. So a tripod is certainly very handy for this workshop, but it's not essential. And you have the advantage um, of uh, observing how other people work and what equipment they have on the evening as well. So I wouldn't rush out to buy a tripod specifically for this evening. In addition to that, I'd say if you're going to buy a tripod, it's essential that you don't buy a cheap one. They simply don't work. Um, you need to spend, well, I would imagine four, five hundred dollars at least to get a good one. Though there's no reason you couldn't buy one second hand uh, at, at a much cheaper price. You need stability, you need strength, and you won't get that of a, a flimsy, lightweight $50 job. An alternative to a tripod, and um, something you'll end up using much more frequently, um, is a fixed or prime lens. That simply means it's a non-zoom lens. So if, the, um, if your subject is too far away, you need to move closer. If they're too close, either you or they need to move away. Um, to get the right composition. So, you know, you tend to um, move a lot more when working with a prime lens, but one of the great advantages of a prime lens is they let in much more light than any zoom lens can. And uh, that's obviously an advantage when working under low light conditions, when you need as much light coming in as possible without having to resort to very, very slow shutter speeds that would result in um, camera movement and blurred pictures. So again, on the evening, you're probably looking at uh, 1 to 800 ISO for most of your pictures um, if you're not working with a tripod. So once we um, do our initial photography on Princess Bridge, we're likely to move down to Birrarung Ma and um, photograph down there. There's lots of interesting sculptures and, of course, the Yarra River's there as well photograph the different transitions of light and their effect on the architecture down there. 
So I guess clearly people would be imagining they'd get an opportunity to photograph a sunset and the afterglow. Um, you could photograph uh, the bridges, the Yarra River, the variety of buildings and structures in that environment. But it's nice to move beyond that and uh, think less about the subject, I suppose, um, and more about what you're exploring through photographing those um, bridges and structures. Um, really, maybe it's textures that you're photographing, the shape of the structure, um, any movement, cars going past during a long exposure, reflections on the water. Um, if it rains, we'll get some fantastic colours as the um, light reflects off the wet surfaces. And a big one for me is duality. So that underpins a lot of my own photography. So opposites, in other words, light and dark, hard and soft, air and ground. And also, you know, we, <laughs> reality, what we see, but maybe the way we photograph something may suggest something other than what's directly in front of the camera. And of course, there's lots of techniques we can um, experiment with on the night working with abstraction. We'll see some basic examples of that in a moment. It's always good to tell a story through your pictures to try to communicate a message um, and maybe a metaphor. Now, this might sound a little bit airy-fairy and you don't necessarily have to think about these things when you're making pictures. It's just after you've made the pictures and you're reviewing them on your desktop at home, you can start to say, well, which images work best and what actually is this photograph about? What have I explored in the process? It's a very worthwhile process to go through and you'll find that your future images will benefit from that. It's a major part of the editing process. So here's a relatively um, stock standard image. You know, we've got a Ferris wheel and we've got these lovely um, uh, orange coloured bells that um, I think on the hour will play uh, music. Um, but there's a lot going on. It's quite a convoluted scene. So there is lots of ways to photograph uh, an environment like this. Movement would be one. And, you know, this is where sometimes, for those folks who don't have a tripod, if the evening gets very dark, then you might decide, well, I can't make a sharp picture, so let's have a bit of fun. And you actually surrender to the low shutter speed or slow shutter speed that's required to get enough light in to make a decent exposure and actually have some fun with that. Those shots are all taken of that same Ferris wheel in motion. We're making pictures that tell stories, and that might just simply be, here's my best 10 images of the evening made during a night photography workshop in Melbourne. That's a story. Just looking for iconic images and for fleeting moments. And it's really nice to concentrate on the intimate as much as the grand vista. And a way to do that is to isolate the subject from its environment. Alternatively, we can take the approach where we include the subject within the larger environment. By moving, not just by zooming. So here we go, that same location, by getting down very low, uh, in fact, with a wide angle lens, I've completely changed the look of the image. The Ferris wheel is no longer in the picture, though I'm standing in really the same position I was for those previous images. So a number of different approaches to photographing the same subject matter, all made within a couple of minutes of each other. You do need to be prepared. This is Melbourne in springtime, and as we know, the weather is changeable. There's no such thing as bad weather if you're prepared for it. There's only badly prepared photographers. <laughs> so we need to dress appropriately. Um, and it may be necessary to wear a beanie, a fleece jacket, a raincoat, or bring an umbrella. Of course, the umbrella is not just for you. It's um, for those folks who are using a camera on a tripod. Uh, will keep the uh, um, rain off the uh, camera and off the camera lens. But, you know, I don't want to scare anyone. I mean, it's just rain, for goodness sake and it may or may not rain, all I'm saying is we need to be prepared, we need to keep an eye on the weather, 
um, and follow the reports uh, for a few days prior to the event. And if it looks like it's going to rain, then we need to be prepared for it. But, you know, I've photographed um, in this environment a number of times and I've run workshops uh, previously on supposedly wet evenings. You know, it might rain for five or ten minutes. You seek cover and you come out and there's a whole range of new possibilities there to be photographed. Um, my view is that weather actually makes the event. So it's very, very important not to be scared off by things like this. A small hand towel is a good thing to bring in your camera bag just in case it does rain and that way you can, you know, um, keep your camera dry. You can lay the towel over the camera in very light rain and of course you can use it to um, um, mop up any water afterwards as well. We shouldn't be afraid of the rain, it can actually make our pictures better. Certainly can make the sky more interesting as well in night photography. So here's some shots made on a rainy night in the city of Melbourne. And why not photograph the weather, the silence, the space, the emptiness of the city at night time? Of course, one advantage of working in a group is that you're not actually alone, so it's safer. And, um, you know, you've got a, a support and camaraderie around you as well. Rarely do people move more than about 50 metres away from uh, other members of the, the group. So you're not so much competing to photograph the one thing you're moving around and exploring the environment in your own way. So see the interesting clouds we get? Um, on a rainy night, the, um, the light from the city uh, shines upwards and illuminates the clouds above. Much more interesting than just a clear night. It can affect reflections. You tend to get a more impressionistic um, view in your reflections than if it was crystal clear without any wind at all. But who knows, sometimes we get a range of conditions in that two hour time frame. As long as we're prepared, we're okay. And you'll never be more than about 200 metres from substantial cover. Often you'll only be about 50 metres. So it's just a few seconds um, and you'll be out of uh, the rain if it comes and if it's a problem. Here's some tips that may help with uh, night photography. It's good to explore the subject from a range of different angles. So that means photographing front on, side on, sometimes from the back. Getting down low and shooting upwards will monumentalize the subject, make it larger than life, and it will help separate it from possibly distracting backgrounds. Getting up high and shooting down, so bridges are good for that. That can render the environment in a different way. And again, realism, suggestion, and abstraction. So realism means um, it's a bridge. There we go. So <laughs> the photograph is a realistic representation of what you would expect to see. Suggestion is when the image starts to move away from what it is and suggests something other than that. Abstraction, um, there's lots of ways to describe abstraction, but one way is where the design elements in the image, the lines, the circles, the textures, the colour, become more important than the actual object you've photographed. And working in this way, moving away from realism, can really help us glimpse new possibilities in our photography and make our images much more interesting. In doing so, we'll be making art. Now this particular structure won't be there, but this is the sort of thing that um, can happen on the evening. Uh, this is an installation at Federation Square, and this image is a little crummy. It was just made with a iPhone 3. That particular camera didn't have a very good camera in it, but nevertheless it's a pretty decent record of what's there, and it's quite a surreal image, you'd agree. A kind of abstraction. And I'm always open to possibilities. So moving off the path for 50 metres, who knows what you'll find.
So the workshop runs in theory for two hours, basically looking at meeting at five and the workshop running from 5.30 till 7.30. Extensive notes will be emailed to you a few days before the workshop begins. So that way, um, any technical issues hopefully will be solved before you actually bring your camera out on the evening. Nothing worse than having to worry about technical stuff. You know, the camera can become a barrier to your photography. What we want is the camera to be a passport into new and exciting worlds. So I try to give as much information as I can, as simply as I can, prior to the event starting. So you can see this is not an abstract image, but it's moving towards abstraction because as well as being a drinking fountain, hopefully you're noticing the colour, texture, shapes and lines in the image. And maybe you started to notice those even before you realised it was a drinking fountain. Well, then it's starting to work from a design point of view, and I would say become a more interesting image. So 5.30 till 7.30, meeting from 5 o'clock onwards on Princess Bridge, Melbourne, Thursday, September the 29th, 2011. There'll be a maximum of 10 people in the group. Now, I'll run it with less, but I, I will not take more than 10 people. I don't think that's fair on the members. Um, also, I'm running it as cheaply as I can. It's going to be $88, including GST, which added to the notes, um, I think is actually very, very good value, regardless of the weather. For further inquiries and to make a booking, please feel free to email me directly, glenn at travelphotographyguru.com. So, here are some reasons why I think you'd consider doing it. You'll be having fun with like-minded people. Be coached by a professional photographer, that'd be me. Be coached by an experienced teacher, that's also me. I've been teaching photography formally for a long time. And I've worked with a whole range of different people, different ages, uh, you know, different experiences in photography, different expectations. You know, I'm, I'm quite well versed in the, uh, the technique of teaching. And I work hard to make my explanations as simple as possible and as actionable as possible. So you ask a question, I hope to give you the information you need so you can act on it straight away. I certainly believe that by the end of the evening you would have taken your photography to a new level. Remember, it's Thursday, September the 29th, 2011, and it's $88 total price, including GST. So let's get on with it. If you can send me an email, glenn at travelphotographyguru.com, it would be much appreciated. I hope to see you there. You can find me on my blog at travelphotographyguru.com. I write uh, Monday to Friday a whole range of um, articles and images from around the world. Uh, there's a lot of current work from Iceland, Greenland, Russia and various other parts of Europe. But I'm constantly putting images up from Asia, um, Antarctica, Australia, all over the shop. So um, I try to make as, it as interesting, informative and diverse as possible. On Facebook, you'll find me at facebook.com slash travelphotographyguru and on Twitter at twitter.com travelphotoguru. It'd be great if you could subscribe to those uh, sites and uh, follow me. Thanks so much for your time. I hope you found it educational, even if you're not able to attend on the evening. I will run uh, more of these sessions later in the year, the night photography workshops, but this is uh, going to be good fun, and I'm really looking forward to it on Thursday the 29th. I hope to see as many of you there as possible, providing there's no more than 10. Thanks so much. Bye for now.